Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first part of our video, Introduction to Networking. We're going to start with understanding what a network actually is. Maybe you have built your own network at home or help someone run their network at school or at your job. At work or home, you have a bunch of devices, computers, printers, TVs, and so on. You connect these by means of a network. When the devices are connected, they are able to share information. This could be sending a print job to a printer, sending an email, or streaming video. This can also be used for sharing and entering connection. For all of these devices to communicate, they need to be connected together somehow. One way is to plug cables into the devices and connect them to another device called a switch. An example is in a school's computer lab. In this case, a, com a computer in the lab connects to a wall socket with a cable. Another cable runs through the wall and comes out at a patch panel. This may be in a cabinet, on the wall somewhere in the room, or in another room entirely. The port on the patch panel then connects to a switch. You might have a switch at home too. Most homes don't have wall sockets. So, devices are connected directly to the switch. We can also connect devices wirelessly. A common way to do this is to use a wireless access point, a wireless network like this so-called Wi-Fi. An example of this is if we have a smartphone, it's impractical to cable it in, so wireless is a good option. The access point is like a switch without cables. More than one device can connect to the access point at a time, but without the messy cabling. The access point can also be connected to the switch with a cable. This way, wired and wireless devices can all be part of the same network. Having both wired switches and wireless access points gives you more connection options. Imagine you have a laptop in an office. You may connect it to the network with a cable when you're at your desk. When you have a meeting in the conference room, you remove the cable and connect to the Wi-Fi. Whether wired or wireless, the goal of the network is to move information from one device to another. That was a network all about. Again, a computer network is a system in which multiple computers are connected to each other to share information and resources. Now we have the list of required hardware to set up a computer network. We have network cables that are used to connect and transfer data and information between computers, routers, switches, and storage area networks. Next, we have a router, a switching device for networks, which is able to route network packets based on their addresses to other networks or devices. We have also network cards that allows a device to network with other devices, as well as with USB card. Generally, networks are distinguished based on their geographical span. A network can be as small as distance between your mobile phone and its Bluetooth headphone as large as the internet itself, covering the whole geographical world. Now, most people who have a basic knowledge of networking are familiar with the terms such as LAN and WAN, but in addition to those, there are a few more network types. And we're going to talk about it. So let's first talk about EPAN, Personal Area Network. Personal Area Network is the smallest network which is very personal to a user. This may be include Bluetooth enabled devices or infrared enabled devices. PAN has connectivity range up to 10 meters. PAN may include wireless computer keyboard and mouse. Bluetooth enabled headphones, wireless printers, and TV remotes. Next, we have LAN. A computer network spanned inside a building and operated under a single administrative system is generally termed as local area network or LAN. Usually, LAN covers an organization offices, school, colleges, or universities. LAN provides a useful way of sharing the resources between end-users, the resources such as printers, file servers, 
scan scanners and internet are usually shareable among computers. LAN are composed of inexpensive networking and routing equipment. It may contain local servers, serving file storage, and other locally shared applications. It mostly operates on private IP addresses and does not involve heavy routing. LAN works under its own local domain and controlled centrally. Think of the bank from before. They have an office with several floors. You can consider the whole building as the LAN. Or, more likely, the network is broken up into smaller parts. Perhaps, there's, there is a spirit network on each floor. Each of these could also be called a LAN. Next, we have MAN. MAN stands for Metropolitan Area Network. It is a network that spans over several buildings in a city or town. MANs are typically connected using high-speed connected such as fiber optic cable. It is a high-speed network that gives the ability for sharing data as resources within a city. And then, finally, there's the Wide Area Network, or WAN. As the name suggests, the WAN covers a wide area which may span across provinces and even a whole country. Generally, Telecommunication networks are wide area network. These networks provide connectivity to months and lands. Since they are equipped with very high speed backbone, ones use very expensive network equipment.